And Senator Martha McSally in Tucson today to honor the first female combat pilot killed in the line of service. Captain Amy Svoboda died in 1997 after her A-10 crash during a tactical training mission. She and McSally served together in the 354th squ uh, Fighter Squadron at davis Monthan Air Force Base. McSally joined Amy's family at the Pima County Air and Space Museum today. Fellow colleagues who Amy trained spoke of her legacy. Amy uh, was an amazing person, um, beautiful inside and out, and had a way with people that is special. She made you feel special. She was happy and gregarious. It like spread to other people. Her family and friends say Memorial Day is a fitting day to honor a remarkable pilot who led the way for women in the Air Force. Lynn Svoboda was the Air Force's first female combat pilot killed during a mission. Captain Savoida was killed on May 22, 1997 during a tactical training mission on the Barry Goldwater Range. She served alongside Representative Martha McSally in the 354th Fighters, fi or Fighter Squadron Bulldogs at davis Monthan. Today on the 20th anniversary of her passing, family and friends gathered to unveil a memorial in her honor. This memorial at the Air and Space Museum is so fitting. It is what Amy would have wanted to do. She would want other people to learn as much about her life and what she loved to do that that could. This memorial will serve as a reminder to those and a teaching aid to anyone who comes by here in the future. Amy was a go-getter, a pace setter, a trailblazer. She was just amazing. I mean, she was such an inspiration to me. She was so immediately accepted as a pilot, as an officer. Um, for me, she just showed that you can be a warrior and a woman, uh, and those are not contradictory, and you don't have to lose yourself, you know, as you stand your ground to be a professional, but then also be a woman. The memorial is the newest addition to the museum's Joyce M. Corrigan Women in Flight Gallery. Coming <laughs>
Kubota attended the United States Air Force Academy from 1985 to 1988, and during her time here, she always gave her best to make everyone else's time better. Amy was one of those people who always made you happy to be here, and it takes a special person to, to make your day at the Academy a, a better one, and she always was that, with her smile and her always friendly hello every time you walked by her. Uh, so I always remember that about Amy. She made being here at the Academy a little more fun. Amy excelled at everything that she did. Whether it was in the classroom, in the squadron, um, on the volleyball court, wherever she was, and people just gravitated to her. From a volleyball standpoint, she was pretty diminutive. You know, she was only 5'8". By today's standards, that's that's a shrimp. Right? But uh, if you look back at the record books and you look at what Amy was able to do, uh, she not only uh, she only not only brought a lot to the game, but she brought a lot to those around her. And I think that's what you're really looking for in a student athlete. On the court, Svoboda led her team by example. She is still among the top five in career digs and service aces. After graduation, she became one of the Air Force's first female fighter pilots, piloting the A-10 in close air support missions, one of the first six women to fly that aircraft. When she first graduated from UPT, women weren't allowed in, in fighters. Obviously, she's one of the first 14. But you knew as soon as that door opened that she was going to be the first one to step through. Tragically, a flying accident took Amy's life after a heroic career on May 27, 1997. The games this weekend serve as a tribute to her service to not just her country, but to everyone she helped throughout her 29 years. It was always about making those around her successful. And to get that example to this generation, I think, is... is, is does my heart good. This means a lot. We all come out for this game. Um, her family comes out for this game. And we're just really grateful that we have an opportunity to remember Amy as a person. We're very proud of the folks who've gone before us and blazed the trail for so many. And I think it's a, absolutely a fitting tribute to uh, Amy and the legacy she's left behind. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to honor the life of Captain Amy Lynn Svoboda, my friend, A-10 squadron mate, and pioneer. Amy grew up in Illinois and graduated from the Air Force Academy in 1989, serving as a co-captain of the volleyball team. She attended pilot training, then served as a T-37 instructor pilot before coming to davis Monthan Air Force Base to become an A-10 pilot in 1996. Amy was one of only 14 female fighter pilots in the Air Force at the time. And I got to know her when she joined me in the 354th Fighter Squadron Bulldogs as the second female pilot ever in that unit. Amy was quickly well respected as a pilot and officer and well liked by so many. Her positive personality was infectious and her dedication to excellence was a model to us all. She specifically inspired me as an example of how to be a woman warrior without losing herself in the tough environment of a fighter squadron. It was a relief and a blessing to finally... On the dark, moonless night of May 27, 1997, during a tactical training mission with night vision goggles on the Barry Goldwater Range, Amy paid the ultimate sacrifice while serving her country. I was on the range that night, and I remember like it was yesterday, the deafening silence when I called her repeatedly on the radio in the hopes that she ejected before her A-10 crashed. Our hopes were dashed, and Amy's extraordinary life was snuffed out with so much potential impact ahead. Her service and sacrifice is not forgotten. After the tragic accident, the Air Force finally invested in changing the lighting in all A-10 cockpits to be fully NVG compatible, likely saving lives. Those of us who serve with her continue to be inspired by her example and her legacy. And generations of young girls will fly in the jet stream that she forged as a pioneering aviator. I cannot believe that it's been 20 years since that night. But on Saturday, we will honor Captain Svoboda's service, bravery, and sacrifice with her family and friends just two days before Memorial Day. Thank you, Amy, for your willingness to fight for our freedoms. We will never forget the price that you paid. And I yield back. The Chair Air and Space Museum unveiled a 20-year-old memorial for Captain Amy Lynn Svoboda. She was the Air Force's first female combat pilot killed on a mission. U.S. Representative Martha McSally spoke at the unveiling this afternoon. She served alongside Captain Svoboda in a fighter squadron at Davis-Monthan Air Force Base. McSally said the captain was a pioneering aviator 
and her, quote, dedication to excellence was a model to us all, McSally said. Captain Svoboda died in 1997 during a tactical training mission accident. Well, thank you. And uh, Sharon, I have a, a copy of the speech that I gave on the floor that I'd like to be presented to you for you to have. As, uh, as I said on the floor, uh, Amy joined the Bulldogs uh, as the second woman there. And I do want to say there are many Bulldogs here today and there are many that couldn't make it, but they are still very much mindful of Amy's legacy. And they're with us in spirit. And she had closer friends in the Bulldogs than, I, than me. I wasn't her best friend. Uh, she had others who were very close to her, and so I, I feel a little uh, inadequate to be able to be speaking for everybody here. Uh, but I'll tell you, in my unique journey as a woman, uh, you know, we had just transitioned into fighters, and where's Zena? She went before. And uh, it was a t interesting transition. You know, there were a lot of Neanderthals out there still who uh, you know, didn't think that we belonged, and uh, we were forging a path, you know, to, to prove that we could be uh, warriors and the jet doesn't care whether you have ovaries or not. <laughs> and, uh, but it was challenging, and honestly, I was a little tired, you know, just from my own journey and putting up with the, you know, locker room nonsense and just being a part of it, you know, I, I, thrived in it and I, you know, succeeded in it, but it was a little tiresome to do it by myself. Um, but as the other women out here can attest to, hearing that another woman was going to show up, I had, I had mixed emotions. Oftentimes, as women in a male-dominated uh, field, uh, it's sometimes almost easier to do it by ourselves because we're not sure, well, we're all going to be judged by uh, how each of us performs, you know, what's, how is she going to act, how is she going to fly, how is she going to interact, and, and that's going to reflect on all of us, and I, did, I didn't know Amy at Air Force Academy, even though she was a year behind me, and so, you know, I confess that I was sort of like ambivalent about her showing up, and just a woman showing up, like, okay, well, I hope she's, you know, got it together, I hope she's going to do great, uh, but what a breath of fresh air when she arrived. Uh, I was talking to one of the TV channels er earlier, and I said it was like a, I was like it was like a it was like a drink of cold water in the desert for me that I didn't know I needed, uh, to all of a sudden have a wing woman, and she was so easily well respected, as a pilot, as an officer, as a leader, as a teammate, as a fellow bulldog, as a friend to the squadron. I mean, her transition uh, was inspiring to me in that squadron, and it helped me realize, like, hey, we've arrived, you know, that it was a non-incident, and she just was such an example of how to be a fighter pilot and be a woman and not lose yourself, like I said on the floor, and not, you don't have to be something that you're not. You, you, can, you can be one of the guys, but you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to change who you are, and and so even though she was younger than me and she was behind me, she inspired me. Um, she lifted me up. She gave me the strength to continue on my own journey. And uh, in the banter that happens often in the fighter world, which is a part of our culture, it was awesome to finally have somebody with me to kind of banter back, you know? As I won't give any examples because we'll keep it G-rated, but uh, there's just a lot of banter that happens in fighter squadrons. And so, again, I didn't realize what I was missing until I all of a sudden had another voice there uh, in the good-natured, you know, uh, environment that we have. was just like, huh, there's somebody who can, I can relate to in a way that just really we can't with anybody else. And so I was so blessed by her presence. And... Um, I cannot believe it was 20 years ago tonight that we lost her. I just, I can't believe it. It seems like it was yesterday. And I'm not going to dwell on that night because this isn't about her death, it's about her life. We all, those of us who were there, we have our memories of, of how it all happened and how it impacted us and how we 
how we experienced it. And I will just say that afterwards, for a long time, as we all worked for our grief, I would yell at the moon, you know? Where were you when we needed you, you stupid moon? If <laughs> we just had a moon that night, this is just what grief looks like. Everybody has their own path, right? But ultimately, her life was snuffed out way too early. And, and Sharon and Karen, there's no words that can, can take away what you went through. You have dealt with so much grief. You have dealt with so much suffering. I don't understand it. And someday when we're all with the Lord, you know, we'll have a better understanding of, of why Amy was, why she left us so early. When she had so much potential and she inspired so many. And, and you've dealt with so much. But as we reflect on our loss, and as we, we reflect on our grief, and what could have been, and her life, and her career, and everything that she had to offer to everyone she met, it's, it's important to, I think, reflect on her legacy. Like, what, what does that mean? You know, it's not just trite words that she has a legacy. Um, I've been thinking a lot about legacy these days. And Amy has a really strong legacy, Sharon. Not only to those of us who are here and those who can't be here, who knew her, who served with her, those who were the academy with her, who were instructor pilots with her and in A-10s, we're carrying on our legacy. We're here today because we remember. Uh, we remember her often. And we're inspired by her example. Those are not just words. It's, it's us carrying on a legacy of inspiration and, and service and love for country. We're a part of her legacy. I think all the women pilots in our Air Force and even others serving in uniform are carrying on her legacy. She inspires so many people, so many women who are serving today, who are flying today, because she forged the way. And in many ways, maybe some of them wouldn't have even known her or reflected on her if she, if she didn't sacrifice. I know I'm trying to make some logic out of it, but because we lost her, we focus more on honoring her, and she is honored and inspiring more young people in the military and pilots in the military like that we can't even imagine. I hear from them all the time because they, they know what she did and they know the, the way that she paved and how she served, what an amazing pilot and officer and leader she was and they want to be just like her. And her, her sacrifice then inspires them to even be better. And then I also think about all the people that are going to visit this place, but especially the young girls, uh, especially the, the kids, the young girls who, maybe they're not going to be a fighter pilot, but they come and they see this memorial and they see and hear about Captain Amy Lynn Svoboda and they say, wow, if she can do that, you know, maybe I can do whatever, whatever the dream is in their heart. And so she is going to continue to inspire people that we'll never even meet. Or no. And that's a strong legacy. And I know that doesn't bring her back. But, but we can know that the sacrifice that she paid for us was not in vain. And that we will be mindful to smile when we think of an Amy story. And we'll be mindful to think of how Amy would have reacted in a certain situation, and we will be mindful to keep you in our prayers as we think of her. And we'll be mindful to carry on her legacy ourselves and to tell others, tell others about her. It's the least that we can do. It's the least that we can do. 20 years is a, it's a long time without her. I just, I can't, I can't believe it. But know that there are so many people here to honor her and those that are with us in spirit, those that are out there 
former Bulldogs, former Air Force, former Air Force Academy, who love Amy, who were inspired by Amy, whose lives were changed by Amy. And several here in this audience could speak you know, even more deeply and eloquently than, than me in that regard. It's an honor for me to be able to share on all of their behalf and to have a platform and a voice to, to be able to have her legacy written in the book of the Congressional Record for Eternity. That's the least that I could do in this, in this moment, in this, in this time. And so Sharon and Karen and the rest of the family, thank you for coming, God bless you. And just know that there are several wingmen and wing women out there for Amy, especially as we come up on Memorial Day. I constantly remind people it's not just about those who die in combat, it's about those who died like Amy in service. That loss is no different. The risk that she took every single day ended up paying this price. But as we have, as we come up on Memorial Day, to remind people to be mindful of the sacrifices of people like Amy as well. And let's meaningfully reflect on what we learned and how we can continue to carry on our legacy. And our thoughts and prayers will continue to be with you in these days ahead, but especially if you think of her on this day of the year. God bless you all. Thank you for the honor to be able to reflect on Amy and what a blessing she was for me and for, for all that she meant.